Good Sunday morning. Once again, dear friends, I welcome you all for this small talk on integrative oncology and then facilitating uh, Dr. Ganesh and the whole team which published the latest paper on how cannabinoids, the Indian extracts, they really work. So that will be the agenda for today. And then we'll have a lighthearted discussion on if you have any issues with the cannabis prescription and all. And also about the upcoming events that is going to happen, right? Uh, with the Ayush uh, Expo in Varanasi and Hemp Expo in Mumbai, and also the medical event in Mumbai. And then in May, we'll have an uh, international event on medical cannabis in Delhi. So all this is hot and happening. So this is hot and happening month for us. And it's also a month where, you know, cancer awareness has been uh, taken up by the international organizations. So, and we took it very strong, uh, strongly. We started with uh, cancer awareness in Bangalore, then uh, in Delhi and now in Mumbai. So let's start with uh, the presentation on integrity oncology. <clears throat> So since I am the active member of uh, Society of Integrative Oncology, uh, USA, where all members uh, across uh, the international community, they have joined hands in promoting the integrative oncology. So what is integrative oncology and what we do in it? Because what actually happens is sometimes just using one thing is not enough. So then how do we do? What are the things that we can do? So that's what we shall discuss. So the definition goes like this. This is the definition provided by Society of Integrative Oncology. Integrative Oncology is a patient-centered, evidence-informed field of comprehensive cancer care that uses mind-body practices, natural products or supplementation, and lifestyle modification from different traditions alongside the conventional cancer treatments. Now we are here not to promote any one thing, not to negate any one thing. So this is the totality that we can do. We have to use the best of all things. So once again, I'll go through the definition. The integrity oncology is a patient-centered, evidence-informed field of comprehensive cancer care that uses mind-body practices, natural products, uh, supplementation and lifestyle modification from different traditions alongside conventional cancer treatment. So we are not uh, negating anything here. Now, what are the core components of integrative oncology? You know, so the core components are, you know, we always ask the patient values and their rights. We inform what is what is that they can do, and patient has to be informed because. Without the involvement of patient, without the involvement of the person, we will not be able to give a comprehensive care. So our thing will be that we value the patients, we value their preferences, and we value their rights, and we want their rights to be exercised in uh, <clears throat> prime most uh, aspects than our own thing. And what our job is to get into the clinical experience that we have, and also the research evidence that is there available with us. So we combine this to ensure that the patient values and the rights and the preferences are guarded. So that the patient becomes the driver of the care and we become so-called the conductor or the supervisor. Okay, and <clears throat> the three main therapeutic modifications that we use is lifestyle modification. We know how important it is for lifestyle modification uh, to, in order to heal the cancer. And then we use mind-body practices because we know that the psycho, neuro, endocrine path can be uh, very important in uh, disease manifestation. So that's why mind-body practices are also included and also the natural products that can be used and supplemented depending on the scientific evidence that we have. Okay, so this is what the core components of integrative oncology. Now, what are the principles? A uh, little more, if you I want to just tell about them is that integrative oncology seeks to engage patients and families as active participants in their own care from prevention throughout the treatment and survivorship. So at all the levels, they have to be engaged. 
you know it is not like i am superior just because i am the doctor you are superior because you are the one who is going to heal yourself we are going to only you know guide you to do that so this principle optimizes health promotion and proactively addresses symptoms and adverse effects that arises from cancer or its treatment so at every level no matter what they have if they have a cold they inform us if they have a loose motion they inform us for everything you know they proactively the symptoms has to be addressed so it is such a uh, you know involving and such an uh, enlightening uh, way of handling the symptoms into integrative oncology prioritizes safety and best available evidence to offer appropriate therapeutic intervention along with conventional care so the conventional care if they like if the patient wants we do it we we are not going to say that so we need to be informed of what is the conventional care that they are getting and based on that we need to suit the integrative oncology of lifestyle modification natural supplementation as well as mind body intervention so that we give give them the best care with least possible symptoms so the journey becomes easy for them right that is what our uh, job is the commitment to rigorous scientific research that is what we are going to do we have to look into this research that is available and the evidence informed practice in cancer care as it is strongly emphasized by the society of integrative oncology the good thing here is the society of integrative oncology together with american society of clinical oncology together they have shaken hand and they have approved integrative oncology care as as the uh, conventional care that is available so they have taken both can be done hands in hand right from uh, prevention through the treatment through the entire survivorship because the, the what is the bad thing about the cancer care is once the patient is out of the cancer we they don't know what to do and we need to use that aspects in order to give them care even at survivorship we don't say that okay you want to prevent cancer just because somebody had cancer yes we do that we want you know to help for the through the treatment yes we do that and once you are out of the cancer you want the, the whole protocol for the survivorship yes we'll create that for you and we'll give it this is what integrative oncology is so flexible and it is patient centric that is what it is now what are the uh, things therapeutic approaches that are used so the first and foremost is patient centric communication that is very important this the first consultation requires time and requires for us to go through the reports and form a patient centric you you from the report you need to find out what are you going to talk to the patient right so you need to understand the patient centric informations or the communications that we have to do so do i have do i have mentioned usually see you see i always mention that is last but i always discuss it first that is because this is very important patient centric communication is important for that we need to understand you okay the patient wants a consultation ask them to send the reports go through every report that they have sent if you are understanding those reports yes well and good if you are not understanding study them ask your seniors ask what you can ask and find out what is wrong in each report right and based on that you need to form a case taking so that okay i am going to ask this 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 so that case taking has to be in such a way that should be patient involving the person should be involved into the communication and then we uh, give them the in evidence informed practice whatever the evidence that we can gather from our end okay so like for example the evidence that curcumin right i'm just telling one example is the evidence that the curcumin can have anti cancer effect in lung cancer we know it it can have anti cancer effect in colorectal cancer yes we know it so we give that information that this is what we can do it's like for example if you want to include uh, B, uh, vitamin b17 so that is what you need to do you need to form a evidence informed practice and put one two three four points and then sit and talk to them and then when they ask what are you do so we do what is called as, as lifestyle modification in lifestyle modification there is so much that can be done as we all know right 
So my lifestyle modifications can be in the form of how they sleep, how they uh, go about their life, what all they eat, diet uh, information restrictions, all that has to be given. Second is the mind-body intervention, which I will uh, go into more detail. And third is the natural products. Natural products are supplementations that we use so as to uh, not only help them prevent, but also during the treatment and post-treatment. So their natural product should not be used blindly. It has to be used with the informed thing. <clears throat> now, what are the various mind-body interventions you know, that can be done? So, I, so this, there is music therapy, meditation, stress management, yoga. These are all recommended for anxiety, stress reduction. This is the evidence-based practice that is there. Meditation, relaxation, yoga, massage, music therapy can also be recommended for depression and mood disorders. Meditation and yoga are recommended to improve quality of life. Acupressure and acupuncture are recommended for reducing chemotherapy-induced nausea and vomiting. So we do that with uh, other things also. Now, before I go ahead, you know, so I would, uh, I think this is totally unwelcoming and challenging. Uh, Doctor, is there or she went? Doctor Surya, ah, there she is. Okay, so you know a few words about lifestyle modifications that can be done. She is an expert uh, in lifestyle modification, so I will give the first. You know, things. this is totally unexpected. This is what we do because these people are all experts in their fields. I'm so happy. You now we have all of them. So, Doctor Surya. What lifestyle modification would you suggest generally? Uh, generally, I just, uh, my first consult takes about uh, an hour or so, 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, discuss about what their habits are and what how they carry their day-to-day -day life, how they handle stress. What is it that they do to relieve their stress? And what is what do they think causes that stress in them? Based on that, uh, take the protocol if they are like more desk workers, then uh, I do suggest uh, short meditations and movements, whether it is desktop yoga or, you know, uh, gentle movements and around yoga and meditation, definitely. Then, of course, the most important thing is the breath. So different types of pranayama, meditation, sudarshana kriya from the art of living. These are some things that uh, I talk about and I also teach. So this is how we start. And then if they are progressing even better and they see that good results, we give them a beach mantra, which we call as the Sahaj Samadhi meditation and take them slowly into a very deep state of meditation known as, you know, the silence where they can experience. They are cut off completely from all kinds of stimulants like uh, WhatsApp, laptop, you know, communication with the, uh, friends and family for a day or a day and a half and to observe how things are going on and that gives them a lot of insight into how the mind keeps talking so if i tell them you can't talk to anybody you can't write on a sheet of paper you can't communicate through the eyes and then they start looking like what do we do and that is when they actually understand that yeah see even if the food is nice it was not presented and this is the chitter chatter that is going on in my mind so it could be the stress due to work or due to some emotions or some friction with family members or anything, co-worker. And all these things start clearing. And once they come out, they say, I don't want to break my silence. <laughs> so this is how uh, things go. Uh, <clears throat> thank you for that small input. So this is you know, you. Uh, what lifestyle modifications that can be done. <clears throat> now... You know, uh, we have another expert healer. So I would ask Ranika to shed a light on the so-called, you know, mind-body uh, thing, special when it comes to music therapy, meditation, stress management, though uh, Dr. Surya has put that, because it's an integrated thing. It's part of life lifestyle modifications also. So how do you go about, uh, Ranika? Okay, thank you, Dr. Tahir. Um, I work as a, a restorative healer and uh, 
basically a lot of uh, components are as dr surya had mentioned uh, meditation silence and uh, yoga and other spiritual practices but also uh, about addressing the past of uh, these patients you know we know that they have a lot of psychosomatic reasons behind their illness psychosomatic as an aggravated by mental or emotional factors like internal conflicts or stress so from the point that they were diagnosed till uh, projected to, towards their future we can have as many practices as we like you know we can change their lifestyle the food modifications diet modifications but what about addressing their past when we talk about addressing their past there are many therapies which can help uh, bring into their own awareness about what are the traumas that they could have suppressed not expressed or uh, you know have an imprint on their uh, subconscious mind so there we have a lot of therapies like hypnotherapy uh, various kinds of regressions are done depending upon their traumatic experiences um a lot of spiritual healing is also needed because spiritual values are very important for the patients to cope with the distress of cancer not just the patient but also the caregiver so there was this a very interesting study which was um a discovery rather that happened in 1991 where uh, a network of 400000 specialized cells were discovered as uh, to form a neural network and this neural network was just like that of the brain so these were brain like cells but they were not in the brain but rather they were in the heart so these cells they think and feel independently of the cranial brain now what was the significance of this uh where do we apply this with cancer patients we have to understand that uh every experience that we have in life is registered in two areas it's not just registered in the brain but it was also registered in this neural network which was res residing in the heart and it was completely independent of the brain which means our experience is registered in two places so if we are uh, trying to address something just cognitively that's half the healing because the emotional component the imprint that was there in the network configured in the heart is left unaddressed and that's where we um, have hypnotherapies past life regression therapies which is a, a, of course not necessarily related to uh, past life but any kind of a regression womb traumas past traumas all these are configured in this neural network and we use these therapies to spiritual healing we use these all to bring out the awareness about what they need to address what kind of angers bitterness hurts pains that they have to uh, you know allow to resurface in order to heal so thank you dr yeah thank you to remind us that we have at least two brain the third one is also there in the gut <clears throat> now i think through cannabis more of that is known that gut brain and skin access is known so widely and you know there are so many like for example diseases like autoimmune disorders and all which can't be handled so <clears throat> uh, in singularity we can just uh, suppress your immune system and get into this right so this is what so these are some of the things uh, uh, that can be done the lifestyle modification the mind body intervention and sometimes alone we we may not be able to do like you know so that's why if as and you may be able to do when you have a limited people to say about you know in a day if you have to say only two to three you, you may be able to do all this therapies together you can always try doing that but then we need a team <clears throat> so that's why we are here we need a team of people who can do this you know at their own ends and then integrate the whole thing and do it so we can have uh, each uh, person do their job the finest okay so i'm just giving you some example like where there is a case where uh, doc, me and dr surya is doing right she is taking part of that i'm taking part of the doctor aspect the medical aspect and all those things right and second thing is like we have done cases uh, together me and ranika where we uh, she took the aspects of the mind body things and i took the uh, aspect of medicine and all so all these interventions we can do so i have been experimenting with this 
we have other people like uh, uh, on the day, cancer day, we released a video with Rachana. She, was, she has done a lot of studies, you know, on her end. So we have so many, the Indian people, you know, we have so many people of them who have their own. There are people who had cancer and then later on they became <clears throat> now the cancer warriors, whereby they are helping others because they have used uh, things, the life modification, supplementations and all, and came out uh, very, uh, you know, positively out of their so-called cancers and all. No. So that's what the other aspect is. So, you know, uh, I would like to uh, hear a few words from Dr. Kavita Mitra Roy, again, it's a surprise for her. <laughs> so on the homeopathic <laughs> aspect, like that is one thing that, you know, we have here. And then I'll ask Dr. Mahesh also to talk a few words on the Ayurvedic aspect of Dr. Chitranjit. So Dr. Kavita, what is your take? Uh, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, homeopathy, uh, as uh, people are now getting more and more aware of homeopathy, what homeopathy is all about. Uh, earlier, it wasn't this, uh, uh, like the people were not this aware. Slowly, uh, awareness is increasing that, you know, uh, earlier people thought, you know, these sweet pills only cured some cold coughs and all that. But yes, of course, uh, it does wonders even in cancers. Here, homeopathy is uh, a place where uh, the mind, body and everything is taken into consideration. And then the medicines are uh, given to the patient, selected based on uh, all the symptoms that has happened in the past. Like suppose the lifestyle, whatever, you know, if they have had problems with the lifestyle or uh, environment or, you know, whatever. So the causative factor also plays a major role in uh, selecting the medicines for home, uh, in homeopathy. And uh, we have uh, different kinds of uh, medicines helping uh, in cancers as well as other diseases. But here, since we are talking about uh, the integrative uh, medicine, so obviously we are focusing on cancers. Different, uh, 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 th there are different kinds of uh, potencies that can be um, uh, given. And I prefer giving the LM potencies to the patients because of uh, the success that I get in them. LM potencies help the patients with minimal uh, uh, aggravations and uh, faster cure so that helps and uh, of course yes uh, sometimes i do help uh, people with the biochemic salts uh, so th that also plays an important role we have the mother tinctures which also helps so this is the way that uh, i can uh, help my patients and i'm trying my best as well as incorporating cannabis slowly into the practice uh, though cannabis is uh, still, I mean, it is still taking time in my clinic. I'm being very honest. <laughs> but then I'm sure that there will be a day when cannabis is also going to be equally important. So this is the way it is going. And uh, thank you, sir. Thank you for that little input. So that's what, you know. So this is the unique thing about, you know, all of us here. So we are all uh, have our basic qualifications in which we have been doing very well since one or two decades. And then we are incorporating uh, medical cannabis so that we can help uh, our symptoms, uh, our patients with the management of symptoms. Yes. So, you know, this is very nice. And all, each of these uh, branch in itself is complete to heal, but then we do face some deficiencies. That's why I think we can. It's a time when we can integrate it efficiently and nicely. Okay, so like for example, uh, India is the land of Ayurveda, and we know that there there have been uh, amazing uh, vaidyas or traditional doctors who have come uh, from the Ayurvedic background, and they have been. Uh, doing so well for all the diseases. But again, when it comes to cancer, because it is such a multi-pronged and such a uh, multifaceted disease that we need the to integrate. So that's why the people from Ayush also, they need to learn a little bit about cancer. 
so that you know they can give a better opinion because after all cancer is the diagnosis from modern medicine <laughs> right so we need to learn some little bit so here you know uh, dr chitranshu my dear friend dr chitranshu ab ho aap pe yes sir yes sir ha ah, so uh, please take tell about your take in integrative oncology care through uh, ayurvedic supplements if i want to put that um sir what i have seen is uh, like ranika ma'am was uh, mentioning there are 4000 different types of uh, neurons present on the heart in ayurveda we have a concept of mana man is uh, present in the heart so we can correlate uh, uh, that uh, for a body to be healthy it is not only the body but also the man part uh, should be hel- healthy of a person so like we have a concept in modern medicine that every disorder is a psychosomatic disorder for the psychology part we have one and the uh, and for uh, the bodily part we have the body so somatic part we have the body so a person to be healthy we should he should be psychosomatically healthy firstly secondly uh, many of the things uh, plays a very important role like diet plays a very important role because in ayurveda we have three stamp of uh, ayurveda ahar nidra and brahmacharya so means ahar means food is very important so one should concentrate not only on the medicine but also on the food aspect of uh, person secondly uh, the sleep sh- cycle should be maintained and uh, thirdly the brahmacharya the specific things or the specific work one should do uh, while uh, going for a disease uh, going against a disease or while going uh, to work on the body and get healthy so we have to work on ahar nidra and brahmacharya yeah also we have a concept of um, like uh, uh, we have to for uh, against the cancer we have a concept like we have to use the medicine medicines played uh, their part we have to train person psychologically like uh, 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 giving the mental support to the person thirdly we have to work on the routine way ki how he should work he should not work what he should do what he should not do that is a very major part also and yeah i think in the present scenario we can't uh, say that only one pathy is enough to treat a very big disease like cancer so we have to collaborate different different portions the good portions of every pathy we have to take that it up and we have to work on that uh, using the good part of all the pathy because every pathy has only one aim that is for uh, the betterment of the patient so we have to use good part from every pathy use that part and get a integrated uh, approach towards the patient like in ayurveda we have if we have curcumin on one side so we also have chemotherapy on the other side if we have something in uh, homeopathy we also have something in yoga sciences also so we have to collectively uh, attack the disease and we have to get out all the good from it and the main aim of a doctor of any pathy is just to get his or her patient all right healthy so that is the major concept thank you thank you dr stranchu so you know that was so nice so that makes this whole talk uh, integrated talk so i thank you all for that so i think dr uh, ganesh may be busy so you know that's what i, I want to tell you that we take uh, this as a bold step in the indian uh, scenario uh, i think the paper has been shared in the group right international journal of phytomedicine so uh, because this uh, such things have never been uh, published from the indian uh, side into the international journal so this was like the title as you have already gone through right the phytohistory of vijay extracts for its potential phyto components so when we don't know what are the components then how can we go ahead so i think this was the first of the three papers uh, as he communicated with me so i'm proud uh, and i feel now it is a time to celebrate for uh, the indian uh, aspect of cannabinoids the indian chapter of cannabinoids that 
he took an initiative and published this paper. So though uh, the paper <coughs> may not be a very great thing, but what it is that uh, he concluded is based upon the results of this uh, investigation, it is prefer referred that cannabis sativa may consider to be safe for use in humans after confirmative parameters. And he has described about the extraction, morphological and all that aspect, which is very important when it comes to the Indian scenario, because Indian scenario is different from the Western scenario. So I think I congratulate once again, Dr. Ganesh and the entire team, and also the Indogenics who sponsored this uh, study and many more studies will come. And I think, you know, in future we'll have studies from uh, our own people in the group whom we know. <clears throat> so this is what is amazing about uh, the most hot and happy. So I thank you all, uh, you know, uh, and I'll close the recording so that we can